Hey Dave, if there is denoising inside of Sharpen AI, Topaz Sharpen AI, why do I need denoise AI? And the quick answer to that is, if you have images that are a thousand ISO or above, you do need denoise AI because it has special capabilities of getting rid of noise in images that I would say that are a thousand or over. But if you have images that are a thousand ISO or under, I think the denoising in Sharpen AI is more than adequate to get rid of that noise and sharpen your image as well. So in today's episode, I have these four images. They're all under 500 ISO. I'm going to remove the noise using Sharpen AI, and I'm also going to sharpen these images using the stabilize mode. Because as you recall, in my past videos, I've told you that I don't like to uh, use uh, tripods when I'm doing floral photography or flower photography. I like to be able to move around liberally, and so a tripod gets in my way. So I get a lot of camera shake images, you know, slight, slightly soft images due to camera movement. I'm using the stabilized mode in Sharpen AI just to show you how I can sharpen these images and get rid of noise at the same time because they're under ISO 1000. Let me show you how this works. Without any further ado, let's get started. Here's our first image. Uh, no sharpening, no noise reduction on it. Uh, some, some basic adjustments done to it inside of Lightroom. And what I've done was duplicated the background layer and called it Sharpen AI. Uh, this was ISO 400, so it's a very low ISO image. I'm using Sharpen AI as a plugin in Photoshop, so all we have to do is come up to Filter and find the Topaz Labs group and click on Sharpen AI, and we'll launch it. And here we are inside of Sharpen AI. Now, if you come up here to View, you'll notice you have three different types of views, single, split, and side-by-side. -side. I'm using side-by-side -side for all of these uh, tests today. All right, now the image on the left will be the original and the image on the right will be the sharpened in the side-by-side -side view. And also I wanna point out that you have three models of sharpening inside of Sharpen AI. Sharpen, which is a basic sharpening. Stabilize, if you have any camera movement and things like that, Sharpen AI will use its uh, magic to correct that. I've never seen anything else work as well as Sharpen AI. And then you have focus, if you have slightly out of focus issues, you know, if you didn't get the the focus quite right in the camera it'll fix it i have to tell you i ran tests on all these images that i'm showing you today and uh they there was a little bit of camera movement so the stabilized mode has taken care of my problem and and i'll show you that in the images uh, i'm not going to go through the focus mode because the stabilized mode has solved my problem but i recommend try both all three modes sharpen stabilize and focus and pick the one that gives you the best results it's just that simple I'm starting out here in the auto mode here. So now let's click on stabilize and you'll see the image will get much improved. And look at that, compare it to the image on the left. Look at that. I'm gonna give it a little bit more. So if you come down to select mode right here and click manual, now you'll see some sliders. You have a sharpness and a noise, suppressed noise slider here. This tutorial today is all about if you have low ISO images, say, a thousand ISO 1000 or under sharpen AI is really all you need for noise reduction and sharpening and I really wanted to make that very clear today what I like to do is start out by looking at the sharpness here and if I think I need a little more I'm gonna bump that sharpness up and take another look at it and see what we get yeah and that's greatly improved it if you compare it to the left then what I like to do is here's a nice little tip see this navigation window up here you can click and drag this around. I like to find an area that's out of focus where you can really see the noise and then let uh, Sharpen AI update itself and see if it's removed your noise. And again, this was ISO 400, so you can see there's some noise there, but on the right, there's no noise. And what I might do is just bump that suppressed noise a little bit to the right to around a 61 and see what it does. Yeah, and that looks good. I'm going to come back down over to the sh to this area right here where I know it's in focus. Not right there, right here. I'm very happy with this sharpening. All we need to do now is click apply and we'll send this right back into Photoshop. After I'm done using Sharpen AI on all these images, we'll go back and do a little bit of pixel peeping before and after to see the results here. On to the next image. So we have this really cool image. Uh, I shot these at the Phipps Conservatory in Pittsburgh, PA. The background layer's already been duplicated. Now we're gonna go ahead and launch Sharpen AI. 
As I've already said, I've tried Stabilize, Focus, and Sharpen, all three models, and the Stabilize works best on all these images. So let's go ahead and click Stabilize. I'm in the Auto Mode here, and check the difference out. Pretty amazing, huh? Compare it from left to right, and the noise is gone as well. Let's he go ahead and open up Manual. I always like to open up Manual, and I like to give it a little more sharpness just to see if that's going to help it. So we're going to add some sharpening first. Yeah, and that looks really good. I think I'll stop right there. And again, I'll find an area that's out of focus and compare the noise from the left original to the right, the affected. And as you can see, that noise is gone. Now, this image was shot at ISO 320. So the first one was 400. This is 320. I'll just give it a little bit extra here. Why not? To about 60, just for safety's sake. And now let's use the navigator and go back over this part right here where it was in focus. Again, I had a little bit of camera movement here, but Sharpen AI has sorted that out for me. That's looking good. All we need to do is click apply and send it back into Photoshop. And now on to the next image. Now this image was uh, ISO 500, so it's a little bit higher ISO. And again, it's uh, the background layer has been duplicated. We'll go ahead and send this into Sharpen AI. We're in the auto mode, image on the left is before, the image on the right is after. And as you can see, even with the sharpen, it looks pretty It looks pretty good. But again, always try these modes. I can't stress that enough. Take that little extra step and try stabilize and focus, and you might really be surprised. But look at the difference right there. Amazing. So now let's click on manual. And as I always like to do, let's pull that sharpness up a little bit and see what it does. Yeah, that's looking really good. Again, let's find an out of focus area so we can really see the noise. Compare the left to the right. The noise is gone, and I always like to give it a little bit extra. I'll usually take it up to maybe around a 60 or so, somewhere around in there, on these low ISO images. And really, sharpen AI and low ISO, you don't really need to run Denoise AI on it. It's going to work out fine for you. And let's go back to the sharpened area, or the area that is in focus, I should say and inspect it, everything looks good. I'll just click apply and send it back to Photoshop. And now for our final image. I really love these flowers here, they look really cool. Again, the background's duplicated. I renamed it Sharpen AI. We're gonna go ahead and launch Sharpen AI. We're in the Sharpen model here. We're set up to, to auto. And if you compare the left to the right, I mean, the right looks good, it looks sharp, but don't be fooled, it does look sharp. Let's uh, click on Stabilize and see the difference here. Now look at that. Let's compare it to Sharpen. Here's Sharpen. Looks pretty good, but now compare it to Stabilize. Look how much sharper that is. It's truly amazing. Let's click on Manual. Let's give it a little extra sharpness, see if it helps. Let's go crazy and jack it the whole way to 100% just to see what kind of results we get. Don't be afraid to move sliders and see. You're not going to break anything by doing that. Now that is super sharp and it actually looks pretty good, but probably a little too sharp for me. I would err on the side of a little less than a little more. And I think right around this 73 is going to be really good. And that looks awesome. And again, I'm going to find an area out of focus and compare the noise level on the left, which is the original, to the noise level on the right, which has been affected by Sharpen AI. Yeah, the noise is gone, but I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm just going to bump it up a little bit more here just to be on the safe side. And let's use our navigator and come back into this area right here and take another look before we send it back to Photoshop. And compare the left to the right. Amazing. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply. Now for some pixel peeping. Let's go to our first image right here. Let's go ahead and zoom into it. And let's click on the before. There's the before. You can see the little bit of noise in there. And there's the after right here. So amazing results. Now to the next image. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy here. Here's the before, kind of on the soft side, and here is the after. Noise eliminated, image sharp, job done on that one. Let's go to the next one, and let's go ahead and zoom in again. Let's look at the before. There's the before, a little on the softer side, not bad, and you can see the noise in there. And here's the after. Let's go to our last image and do a little pixel peeping on it. Let's go ahead and zoom in. 
All right, let's look at the before. Here's the before, kind of on the soft side, and here's the after. Sharpen right up, noise removed, everything taken care of. I hope this video resolves the question, do I always need to use uh, Denoise AI on my images? And the answer is no. If you have a low ISO image, you know, say 1000 and below, Sharpen AI is really all you need. The noise reduction engine in there will do a great job for you. And I, and I hope that this video proved that for you. So we had these four images, very low ISOs. I think the highest ISO I had was ISO 500. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.